Yo guys, it's IP here, back again today in Daisy, except not really because this is post-commentary, so yeah. Basically what I'm going to be going over today is sort of a revisit of a video I did a while ago, which was talking about how to optimize Daisy to get them dank frames per second, except you can't really do a whole lot about it, depending on your hardware and a lot of other things. As you know, this game is horribly optimized at the moment, which is really unfortunate because it's a lot of fun, although there are a lot of other problems with it. But we're not going to get into that, as that's not the point of this video. So today I'm going to be going through some quick stuff that I do to get some amazing frames per second and by amazing I mean staying above 30 at all times granted unless you're in a city you're probably gonna be pulling 60 FPS just fine but uh, you know cities as I threw in some city footage in here as well to make sure to basically prove to you guys like yeah I'm not trying to claim that I'm always gonna get 60 FPS because obviously that's not the case because this is Daisy and that's how things go so we're gonna start off by going through my system specs since those are obviously a little bit important um and this is what i've actually I, I did some research before upgrading my system to this to basically figure out what would get me some or like what would be optimal for the way daisy is right now and granted that's not a great idea since obviously it's still in alpha so there will be a lot of optimization as time goes on but you know whatever so basically I'm running, uh, the, the important stuff right now is uh, I'm running with an i7-4790K at the stock speed, so 4 GHz and then 4.4 GHz turbo. Um, a GTX 970 Strix, which the graphics card is a bit important for this. I have noticed that when running at the settings that I'll provide with you, you with in a second, um, it actually does use over 2 gigabytes of video memory. Not a ton over 2 gigabytes, it's like 2.2 gigabytes, but my old 760s couldn't really do that because obviously they didn't have more than 2 gigabytes of video memory, so yeah, there's that. But yeah, so basically those are the only real important specs. I'll put a full spec list in the description just in case you guys are really wondering. And yeah. So basically there's a couple things you need to make sure that you do when you're optimizing DayZ. Obviously in-game settings are important, but I have found that those are more reliant on your graphics card and on top of that they don't seem to affect actual performance that much. Granted, there are certain things that will. Anti-aliasing is probably one of the hardest hitting, you know, settings that you can adjust in game. I suppose you could adjust it out of the game with the uh, concrete files, but you know, that's unnecessary, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so I'll cut here to a like little slideshow of all of my settings pages. Granted, some of them aren't that important, but for those of you who care, it will be there for you to see. So, um, you know, we'll go through those real quick, and then we'll get back to the important stuff. Okay, here we are back on the desktop where the important things during the optimization come in, at least in my opinion and from what I've noticed. So assuming you're not being bottlenecked by anything else in your system in terms of like a, well, I should say you're not being bottlenecked by your graphics card. So your graphics settings don't matter as much. This is where you're going to go next and this is where you're going to see the amazing performance improvements. And by amazing, I mean okay because there's so only so much you can do so basically you're going to want to start off by going to your de uh, your uh, like home thing whatever the hell it doesn't matter you could it's in windows explorer this beautiful thing like look at this omg um so you're going to go here and then you're going to go to your documents and find your daisy folder i'm sure for those of you who have done any sort of modifications to your uh, daisy stuff this is where you'll have gone, and so you'll know exactly where this is. So basically, there's going to be these, you know, I, I believe there's always three folders here, um, but you're only going to need to touch one of them. So 
you're going to see your files obviously will have different names. This Daisy one will stay the same, but uh, your uh, the one we're going to touch is going to have the name of your profile, I believe, uh, on like whatever your character is called in Daisy. So you're going to double click and open that, which opened on one of my other monitors. Sorry about that. What you're going to end up doing within here is, well, first off, you can see all these different things. This is a lot of the same settings that you edited in game are also editable in here, but we don't really need to do anything with that. So the fastest way I have found to get to the stuff that you really, really want to, you know, change is hit control F, which is find and just search scene. I think just scene does it. Yeah, there you go. So just type in scene and hit cancel, whatever, close that out. And then you see here, there's this beautiful setting scene complexity which the other ones do matter which we're going to go over in a second but this is the one that really really impacts performance granted a lot of people will recommend a higher number than this um if you have a good processor and whatnot and but i have found that even with a good processor it doesn't matter because the thing is um, even though, I mean, I've got, I would like to think that I have a good processor. I'd like to think the 4790K is good, but even when I'm putting it up at the higher numbers that are recommended for this specific processor, the performance is still God fucking awful. Not sure why, but it is what it is. So, yeah. So seeing complexity, I set this to 150,000, which for those of you who perhaps have changed this before, you might think, oh, this number is really, really low. Why is that? Well, the thing is, as I understand it, when you set scene complexity, like this number determines how much, how many like objects are rendered within like a certain, like within your view and how many it's allowed to do. I, I don't know exactly. It's obviously not rendering 150,000 objects or maybe it is, I don't know. But basically, the lower the number, this number, the less it's actually showing you at any given time, which in turn allows for you to have their like better performance because your CPU isn't trying to figure out or do whatever the hell it does with, you know, showing you all those objects. So the less this is, the better performance. But at the same time, the more likelihood that there is something that you, there that you perhaps won't see i'm not sure how it determines what it decides to show you to uh fill up or to get you to the limit of whatever you have this set to but i haven't had any issues where it's like oh i didn't i can't see players in the distance or my render distance is ridiculously low and nothing has really happened that has caused that to be an issue for me some people will tell you oh but you won't see players at distance Nyeh, 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 nyeh. well they're lying because i see people far away all the fucking time and it doesn't matter at all so then you got shadow distance which is exactly what it sounds like it's how far shadows render 100 is really low so shadows don't really render that far but i found it to be not that important because shadows aren't that important especially since a lot of people just play with them disabled so you can set that to whatever you want i have it at 100 because i mean i like shadows but i don't really like seeing them all that far out this also seems to affect how quickly they degrade as you get farther away from them so yeah uh, view distance i believe this is overall how far you can see without like there being fog i guess you could say not entirely sure i have this set to 1400 which gives me actually a pretty pretty long distance view which is nice um, granted certain objects don't render out that far anyways because of the scene complexity and stuff like that and preferred object view distance which is shorter than the view distance so view distance basically allows you to see a little further than you would see objects and yeah um, preferred object view distance I believe this basically affects um, what like how far out you would be seeing say buildings or whatnot um, and how quickly they degrade as they get further away. Um, so I have that set to a thousand, which also, well, I think, yeah, that's the thousand. Um, basically this allows you to like, it, it, it's a good balance of being able to see far and at the same time, get good performance. Granted, you're going to see the buildings off in the distance and whatnot will be low res and kind of crap quality but the thing is unless they're up close you're not going to be exactly interacting with them so it doesn't matter but then again all of these settings here are you know tweakable 
to however you want them to be. So you got to figure out if you're okay with sacrificing uh, your frame rate for, perform for uh, you know, look things looking good and stuff like that. Another one that I've seen commonly referred to is terrain grid, which I have set to 3.125. Not sure what it does. Don't know if it actually affects performance. I just set it at this because it's what's recommended. So, yeah. For now, though, that's all that we need to do within this beautiful config file. And depending on if you're going to go in-game and adjust settings further, um, you're going to either want to leave this... Uh, like not check read only on it or check read only basically what happens is there are certain settings in game that if you don't have read only checked it'll i believe it's like uh oh what is the setting it's like object view distance or object complexity or something within game within the in game settings that if you change them they will change some of the values that we just changed within the config and then totally undo the work you just did so if you want to just be saved click read only but keep in mind that if you do this um, and then you go in game and try to edit any sort of any of the graphic settings doesn't matter what um, actually I believe it's not even graphic settings I believe it's pretty much all of the settings that you can edit in game and then you hit okay they won't actually save and they'll revert themselves as soon as you uh, either close the game or the would just won't change like you'll hit okay and then if you go back to that menu they will look as though they just never changed so before you edit the config file make sure you're you know done changing your settings in game so like disabling mouth smooth mouse smoothing and all that fun stuff so yeah another one just to keep in mind this has certain uh settings the just daisy config file has certain settings in here that you might want to touch most of these are editable in game but certain i don't know like if you have something really specific you want to change uh this has good stuff because you can actually enter specific numbers for like your render width and height and then obviously this sort of stuff is changeable in game, which I just said, but if you want to be more specific about it and perhaps something isn't going correctly and you just want to double check and make sure that things are actually changing uh, for the game or perhaps you want to make a change that isn't normally uh, like an option, like a render setting or a render resolution that isn't normally in game, but you want to change it, you can do that within here. Not quite as pertinent per to performance, but it is very helpful. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you somewhat to hopefully improve performance on, uh, well, this actually did work on pretty much every setup that I have ever had. Granted, um, I've only really played it a ton on when I had my FX9590 and then, of course, this i7. So it does actually give you a significant performance improvement on both the AMD processors and Intel obviously. Intel will be a bit better than AMD in, as it is in pretty much every case unfortunately as it stands but that's a topic for another video. So yeah let me get let me know in the comments below um, how this has affected your performance. Um, most of the time it'll you know keep you running if you have specs similar to mine it'll keep you going at above 60 fps for the most part in small towns and then obviously when you're running around in forested areas and whatnot um, then obviously when you get into higher density zones it'll be kind of hard to you know keep up with that amazing 60 fps but that's just how the game is at the moment so yeah so as uh, as far as I know, this is going to be a fairly relevant video until the new renderer comes out. Uh, since I don't know how much the new render is actually going to improve performance, I hope it improves it a lot. But I also don't know how it's going to change how these optimizations will work. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.